Welcome to our meditation segment, As Within, So Is Out. The topic of the day is the divine just state and his king. And a state to be just and divine has to be ruled by a philosopher king, would say Plato, or the imam of the time, the vicegerent of God, the man who has the spirit of God with him. Abbasadik from him is peace says in his book, The Goal of the Wise, that is the entirety of religion and its purpose. To allow God's rule on the earth, a rule which will spread justice and equality throughout the land. Here we speak about humanity and the outer organization of society, but actually it speaks also about our inner. And that is also what Ahmed Hassan from Himis Peace says in one of his quotes. By Allah, justice won't be achieved until it is achieved between you first. And this justice and fairness has to start inside of you, O oh believers. So the question is, who is ruling our kingdom? Who is on the throne of our being? Is it the ego? Is it the me first philosophy? Is it the bad nafs, the shaitan? Or is it the good nafs, the light of God, the soul, the God awareness, peace, love and service? Because there are two forces inside of us that are fighting for rulership. An old and primal battle, a fight that has happened since the beginning of creation. This battle, this fight is still happening right now and is still happening inside of us right now. Our destiny is linked to how we manage this battle inside of us. So God chose for us to be led by light, by our soul, the same way that he has chosen the earth to be led by a divine appointed king. Still, we have to make this decision inside to submit to it, to allow God to rule inside of us. And this has a lot to do with awareness and to be able to distinguish the different voices, these two forces that, we, that are acting inside of us and then to make a choice. What are we validating and what are we dismissing, rejecting? And this all starts with thoughts. And that's where meditation comes in. So how do we make it happen that God is ruling inside of us? We can say there is three steps here in a, in a meditation that I can share with you. The first step will really be to come back to our space, to a bigger picture, to take a step back, take some altitude so we can, can see what is happening. What is the programs that are playing? What are the voices that are speaking inside of us? Then we'll have to, as I say, validate or choose what we want to follow, what we want to feed. And once we have understood that, the, the most important is how we are consistent and firm in our decision to always reject evil and always choose what is good and what is leading us towards God's rule inside of us. Let's pass to the practice now. I invite you to find a place where you can feel comfortable and you are at least available for this five, seven minutes of meditation. And the first step is really to come back to this spaciousness, this presence inside of us, come back to the space. And we don't need to create space. Space is there, you just have to trust it. Like the sky is behind the busyness, the, the grayness, the cloudness of the sky. And one efficient way to start with is breathing. So let's take a few deep breaths together. So now when you do that, you feel that everything is slowing down. Most likely the thoughts are less present. You feel uh, a spaciousness. You, you feel some, some presence, some, some peace. For others, maybe the mind is still very busy. And this is okay and it's also natural. But to breathe like this is also, the intention is to 
to cut from the, the busyness of the mind. And another thing we can do is always to have this intention to drop, right? Everything from the past, from the future, from other contexts, from others, from you, from me, anything. Just right now, you decide that you drop any kind of thinking. You drop, you drop, you drop. You just stay in this silence of your being, this space. Because what is mostly happening for, for a lot of us is that we are engulfed in a kind of chain or a train of thoughts very often in our day. And this, this chain of thoughts, this track that we follow can, can last maybe some minutes, some hours for, for some. And it brings us in this tunnel vision. And it's very important to, to get used to, to get back to a, a bird view, if, if I can say, to, to take some distance, some altitude. So from there, you can see the train tracks that you are following. So it is important to get used to, the, to this space, to, to, to bring back our attention to the space in which everything is happening. And you get used also to this, this silence, to this not engaging with anything, not doing, not commenting, not thinking and it has a taste of for some of peace but for some others maybe it is a bit scary because there is this anxiety of the unknown I'm not used to just stay silent not to engage with anything and it's extremely important to get used to this to this space inside it's from there you can observe from there you can choose really you can gain your power back and having your freedom to choose back and the invitation of the thoughts the voices will come and just for this moment where we try to get used to this silence just reject everything get used just to to dismiss every invitation, how seducing it can be, how important and urgent it can be. Just train yourself to be able to reject thoughts, to dismiss them. And then you find you you find yourself in this in this spaciousness. To do that again, you can come back to your breathing and you can use this, this tool of just, I drop, I drop everything. This intention of, I don't engage with anything. Don't be afraid of this silence. And it will happen many times, you, you find yourself engulfed in one of these train tracks, this chain of thoughts. And this is normal, just when you observe that, come back uh, to the space, to the presence, take some altitude. Another image we can take is that to come back to this space is to find yourself on a bridge and you let under you pass the, the river, the stream of thoughts. It means that you can observe them, but you're not engulfed with them. You're not dependent, you're not, you, you go out of this tunnel vision. back this, this image of the train track, you know, it's very important actually to understand that because your thoughts at the end of the day becomes your actions, your action become your behavior and at the end it is really you, yourself, how you are in your life. And if you ne never get used to get out or to observe your own thinking, 
you may find yourself producing a way of thinking and a way of acting that leads you on one direction. And at the end, really at the end, end, end of the day, there is two, two tracks, two train tracks, one that goes to hell and the other to heaven. That's how important it is to, to pay attention to your process of thinking and how important it is to develop this tool of being able to, to just to drop, you know, drop also your emotional state, drop your anger, drop your sadness. Don't spend too much time in that state. Drop your busyness, your worry, your anxiety, and come back to your spaciousness. And there, reevaluate and choose a, another track, choose a, another way of living. So when you can observe your own evil, rebuke it and do the opposite, justice. Justice will appear inside of you. And it's an inner work, it's a very important, subtle but very important work you can do. And at the end it's really about your own salvation. And I can say that faith becomes actually a decision, a decision what you validate and what you dismiss. I hope this session was beneficial for you and until next time, I wish you the best, take care of yourself, Salam.